In the middle of Vancouver Island is a lake, but not just any lake, a mountain lake. This lake, that goes by the name of Brigade Lake, is the first major hike I did when I came to Vancouver Island four years ago. Now, I've been here a couple times, but I've always wondered while standing at the lake, looking up what it would be like to stand on top of the mountain above it. This is that story. Good morning. Today I'll be heading up Mount Gibson. I'll be heading over to my friend's houses. We'll be carpooling over there and heading up. So we made it to the trailhead here. The road has actually been fixed. It was broken kind of two years ago, but. So we've got a really snowy uh, start of the trail here. You can see we've only got like a centimeter of snow maybe. And our trailhead is up here. This trail's pretty crude right now. It's a little rougher shape than last time I did it two years ago. Some chunks missing, especially the stairs right at the very start. Okay, so Brigade Lake, they used to have all stairs at the beginning. They're all gone now. I'm guessing that the logging company came in and removed them all because they want to massacre this forest. That's my guess. Because um, usually if there's some trees or some, uh, some planks that are not steady or secure or whatever, they get marked or they get removed and replaced. But the big beams of the whole side, every, the side rails of the steps, the whole thing is gone. So it's a real chore now to get up here. Brigade Lake Trail is notorious for its epic fallen trees and giant mushrooms like this chicken of the woods I filmed two years ago. First little glimpse of a view here, nice and snowy. Alrighty, we've got a dead tree here. And no more trail. We go over or under. We're going over. We're over, folks. We've got some little tiny paw prints. Post a comment if you know what those are. So there are still a few steps left. Uh, we're almost up to Brigade Lake now, and uh, then we start going through the bushwhack route up uh, Mount Gibson. Oh, just got hit in the face with a branch really hard. Oof, got stuck on my bag and whipped me in the face. So apparently I lied. <laughs> we're not almost at <laughs> Brigade Lake. Just feels like that. Looks like somebody was hungry here. Look at this. So we notice we've got some pink tags here that say road location all the way down. If you want to get up to Brigade Lake before they massacre this place, got to come quick. The road location goes over here. They're just going to come through and just devastate this place. <sighs> Well, as they say, greed killed the cat in Brigade Lake Trail. Little did I realize while going up here that the logging had already started. One large swath of land had already been cut down not too far from where we were standing. There's definitely ways to do logging where it's not clear cutting and it destroys all the biodiversity of the of the forest itself and it would still keep it intact and it would actually strengthen it because the bigger trees that are left, say if they logged every second tree or every third tree, those trees would grow so much bigger and provide homes for different kinds of plants. And it's just sad that our government, uh, you know, blatantly allows this. We found one bridge they haven't cut down yet. comfortable well-marked trail suddenly turned into a rough bushwhack. We'd been following a friend's track to get up here and it turns out this new track that we were following is actually the new trail as part of the trail has already been logged as you can see here. This new bushwhack trail goes around the newly created logging road up a steep bushwhack up a rocky slope. There are several places where you have to climb up a significant height like 8 to 10 feet with high potential of twisting your ankle on the way down. Yeah. 
A little bit of bushwhacking would be a real day hiking without some bushwhacking. A little bit off course here. And we're almost back to the trail. Full on bushwhack now up this ridge. Not that many, many bushes though, you can get through here pretty easily. Just a little crusty, a little slippery. Not too bad. Do you notice her crampons? Which one is it? She's got a crampon on backwards. <laughs> what do you say? Backwards crampons better than no crampon, right? <laughs> so in typical fashion, I have crampons and micro spikes and snowshoes and I'm not wearing any of them, just sliding around. Should probably put on my micro spikes. So our harrowing book bushwhacking has ended. As you can see the trail tape right there. But we're about to bushwhack again anyways, shortly. So we've got a frozen pond here. Very wet. So we just came from over there. That is the uh, goes down to Brigade Lake, and we're going to Mount Gibson, which is up this way. So from this point on, we're all bushwhacking right to the top. There's no trail up there. I really don't know what's going to happen in the next year or two. If they're going to log this whole mountain, if they're going to log all this beautiful stuff, who knows? It's really sad. It's a really unique forest. So there is a trail marked with tape up here. There is no trail. Let that be clear, there is no trail, but there is tape if you want to follow that, which is not really a good idea. You should get yourself a track and do it the proper way, but it gives you something to follow. Almost getting there all starting to bonk as I just stated to them my ass is bonking <laughs> whatever that means <laughs> it's time for a break first break came after six and a half kilometers and about 3,200 feet of elevation gain. As we looked up at the pillowy soft snow covered stair steps, we knew our next two kilometers and over 800 meters of elevation gain to the summit was going to be a grueler. All right, so after a little break, we're cranking up here. I think we had about 400 vertical feet to go. I don't know how many kilometers, but it's really steep and exhausting. And I try to navigate, but well, we're following uh, friend's footsteps who was up here last weekend so still have some uh, steps in the snow you can still see you can just barely see their footsteps up there well we're almost near the summit you can see up there just about there oh this is steep uh, oh we're so close just want the sun up there So 
I think we're final push here. Really steep. Substantial cliff right there, which is fun. We will get away from that. On this episode of Name Those Tracks, upon further inspection, this appears to be an eagle that swooped down and captured a rabbit. You can see where the rabbit's footsteps tried to juke out the eagle and end up getting caught. Oh, this is exhausting. I feel like a grizzled baboon on a Thursday. Oh. Actually, I'm sure a baboon could get up here easier, easier than me. The gorge, who knows what's down there. Some of these spots have big little chasms under the rocks. Let's see, I gotta be a little careful up here. Ironically, this is basically the crux. It's just so slippery and steep, this weird angle. Uh. 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 That's, <laughs> That's a weird crux right there. <laughs> well, this doesn't look dangerous. There was a giant rock just before this one that had a huge crack that went down pretty far and we didn't know if there was gonna be a big hole by this giant rock too. So that's Mount Kletza behind me there. Different mountain. <laughs> we are at the top here. four and a half hours to reach the summit of Mount Gibson. The total eight hour trek up and down the mountain was totally worth it for the mere few minutes we'd get on the summit. These are the experiences I live for in life, even if they only last for a moment. Nothing feels better in life than pushing yourself beyond your limits and discovering who you really can become.
draining my drone batteries and my hands being completely numb from the bone chilling winds, it was time to go. Before headed down, I kinda wanted to slide down this. I'm not using poles going down here, so it's not that steep. It's like just past one o'clock, so we gotta get out of here before it gets dark. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. Uh, I'm gonna address some of the comments. Some people, especially back to my Halloween video, people were commenting that I was wearing the costume to make extra money off these videos and that kind of stuff. Um, let's just be pretty blunt about it. So these videos cost me about uh, 500 bucks of my time in just editing out the hiking to make these and I make about $4.50 on ad revenue. So you do the math on that, that's not a good return on investment. No one's getting rich here. I'm just using a lot of my time to create these in hopes of chasing a dream. Yeah, those comments can stop. They're kind of ridiculous. But uh, if you do appreciate these videos, if you can hit a thumbs up, um, I, need in, I need engagement on these videos for them to do well, whether that's leaving a comment or hitting the thumbs up or sharing it. Without that, my, like this is not going to be sustainable long term. I don't know how many more of these videos I'm going to make if they just keep uh, getting really low engagement. So just the truth of the matter is just it's taking up a lot of my time and my main business is now uh, really suffering because I've been spending so much time on this. So. I'm utterly exhausted right now. We're very close to the end, 16, 17 kilometers in, 13, 1400 meters elevation gain, something like that. Just a real grueler, this one. <laughs> We're getting there. I'm more exhausted than a frightened badger. Oh, the legs are giving out. It's actually mentally very exhausting if you've never done any like off-route stuff. You get mentally exhausted trying to either find uh, track or find your way through something to be aware of if you're going to get into doing backcountry stuff there's a whole other element of tracking yourself back so there used to be a bunch of stairs all the way here and they're gone and now i get to try to slide my butt down this thing so here's invisible staircase number two and then invisible staircase number three Used to be here. All right, so it's dark now. We just got to the bottom. It's probably the nicest snow summit I've ever seen, actually, yeah, except maybe that triple bagger of Mount Joan. Hopefully, you enjoyed this episode. If you want to support me, I have a Patreon at patreon.com/davidhiking. And until next one, have a great day.